Four years ago, I started working on a game engine. Now it's time to get serious and release our first game on Steam. A game heavily based on a massively successful classic, which had a brand new concept that took the world by storm. Stick around to learn what it is, how it works, and how you can add it to your game. Ah, <sighs> games in the 70s. Such an important time in the video games industry, with games like Pong, which by the way was the first commercially successful video game. What else was there? Breakout, Asteroids, and of course, Space Invaders. Now, Space Invaders was a particularly important game. It was released in 1978, and it became the number one game worldwide, like in the history of video games. It started off as a hit in Japan, and then it just grew worldwide. They literally had arcades open up, which just had Space Invaders. It turned video games into a global industry, and it also started the golden age of arcade games. So, what made the game so good? Such a crazy difference between games nowadays and back then. And yet Space Invaders still turned up $2 billion in quarters. That's not inflation adjusted, $2 billion in quarters, in actual quarters. Why would people keep playing it? I mean, look, here's a clip of the original Space Invaders. Does that look fun to you? <laughs> Can't really say no, can you? I mean, it's a, it's a classic, right? But what about this? What about this? What if we just remove this little thing? Just uh, sweep it under the rug. Okay, cool. Shooting aliens, still kind of fun. Yeah, not bad. And then when you lose, it just says game over. And then you can play again. Would you? Would you really? Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, play, I'd play again. Wait, what's this? I have to pay? To play again? Didn't know EA was a thing back then. Ha. Huh. Yeah, I, uh, I, I guess I have one quarter left and I'm already all the way here in the arcade. I might as well play again. But hang on. What if we just put this back here? Hmm. That's interesting. It's a number. And it's, it's going up. How exciting. And then when you lose, you get your score. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Who's this? What's this? Your arch nemesis. And why is my score lower? than his. Where's that other quarter? You're damn right I'm gonna play again. Point being, by simply adding an increasing number on the screen and showing it to you in a leaderboard when you lose, you now had so much more reason to play the game again. And again. And again. Space Invaders was the first game to feature leaderboards. I mean, think about how cool that was for the first time to have a leaderboard. Gaming suddenly became so much more social and competitive. You'd race to the arcade after school first thing to try and beat your friends, or even become king of the arcade. Or so I hear. I was born in uh, 94, so. I never knew the good old days. This obviously generated so much money for the arcades and the games industry as a whole, just pushed it to completely new levels. So anyway, I guess what that means is that our game definitely needs leaderboards. But we're not exactly making our game for an arcade, are we? Well, if you think about it, isn't the whole world just one big arcade? No? Okay, fine, whatever. We're so connected these days with our internet that now instead of being king of the arcade, you could be king of the entire world. So we need a global leaderboard. But... How do we set that up exactly? Well, the concept is actually really simple. You play the game, you lose, you submit your high score. This has to go into the internet, where it will reach a server and be stored in a database along with everyone else's score. Now, when you want to view the leaderboards, either in-game or on the web, the server reads the scores from the database and serves you the data. So how do we set that up for our game? Well, we need a server. Just call hosting. What a great idea. All right. Uh, yeah, hello, hosting -er. Uh, yeah, one server, please. Okay, cool, thank you. Well, I hope that comes quick, because I need to get this done to So now that we have our hosting and server, let's set it up. This part is super easy. One of the reasons why I love hosting it. Now we specifically need a VPS here because we'll basically just be using it as a computer. All we have to do is go through this series of pages filling in just some details, just some standard details that you'll need for your server. Pick a server location. Usually I go with wherever most of my users are going to be. We can pick from a wide range of operating systems. I'm just gonna go with Ubuntu 20. Set a root password, of course, and 
yeah, that that's it. Our server is ready to go. Now, did I mention that Hostinger have some absolutely amazing Black Friday deals? You can get up to 80% off web hosting. And if you use coupon code CHERNO at checkout, you'll get an additional 10% off. Just go to hostinger.com slash CHERNO and check it out for yourself. It's seriously so cheap right now. And I also want to thank Hostinger for being such an amazing partner and sponsor of this video. All right, so... Now that we have the server all set up, ready to go, we can SSH in, everything is working, it's time to do some web development, which personally I hate. Or, or, or we get Tim to do it. Basically this is the plan and how it works. Once someone loses the game and they want to submit their high score, we can use an HTTP post request to send any data we want from our game onto the web server. So for example, we'd need to send like the name of the player and their high score at a minimum. And then on the server side, which will receive that post request, it can process it and it can take the data from the post request, like the player's name and their score, and store it in the database, just like in our beautiful plan. Now we use Node.js to make this happen, but you could use any like server-side programming language, such as PHP. In fact, if you use PHP, it'd be very simple, probably just like a few lines of code. And then of course, from the viewing of the leaderboard side of things, all you really need to do is ask the server for some scores, and then it can provide that to you in the form of like a JSON string. And you can of course have your game parse the JSON and present it in some kind of nice way and basically do the same thing inside a web browser if you want your leaderboards to be viewable on the web. And yeah, that's it. That's pretty much all there is to it. Great. We can ship our game now. What's this? Someone's trying to hack us. Whenever there's a connection to the outside world, there's always that one guy, that one guy who just has to ruin everything. We need some security. Otherwise, all it really takes is someone just popping open Cheat Engine while playing our game modifying their high score, adding some zeros or something, and then just submitting it. And the server's like, oh, well, I guess that's your high score. Well done. You're number one now in the whole world. It's really as simple as that, but you could go even deeper and more advanced. Like you could decompile the binary of the game, modify some things, submit something way larger, or even intercept the post request in something like Wireshark, and then just modify the data packets, or just hit the server yourself from your own application with your own post request with a high score, and the server's just not gonna know any better. Now, technically speaking, this is a bit of a hard problem to solve. I mean, look at pretty much any game nowadays. They have cheaters to some extent, and they can't really fully fix it. Did you hear that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the second Modern Warfare 2, is actually getting people to like verify their phone numbers before you can play online? But that kind of illustrates just how difficult this problem is to solve. So there really is no quick, easy fix, but, but we can do a number of things to make cheating way harder than just popping open Cheat Engine. For example, we should use HTTPS instead of just HTTP. Because what HTTPS will do for us is it will actually encrypt like the contents of the packet. So it won't make it, it won't make it easy for someone to just open up Wireshark, see exactly what the post request should look like, and then spoof it themselves. And also, how about validating the scores, like server side? You get a really high score that's unusually high, don't immediately display it and publish it onto the leaderboards, Maybe hold that bad boy for moderation. But speaking of moderation, how do we even know if a score like that is possible? Well, why don't we collect some other metrics from the game, such as how long that round or match lasted for, how many kills they got, how many bullets they fired. Because if someone's cheating in a very obvious way, like they've, they've fired five bullets and their score is five billion, something is wrong here. They've definitely cheated. It's just physically impossible to get that high score by just firing five bullets. And, in case we get a naughty boy. Let's also collect people's IP addresses. With consent, of course. And also, if the game is on Steam, for example, their Steam IDs, so that we can ban them. We can just hold a blacklist on the server of certain IP addresses or usernames or IDs or whatever, and just reject those scores. And worst case scenario, manual, high score, approval. The nuclear option. Basically what that means is that whenever someone submits a high score, it doesn't show up on the leaderboards until someone from your development team goes through the list, goes through the queue, and gives it 
gives it the tick of approval. Now technically at this stage we're reaching territory where first of all like that would be really difficult to do if your game is popular and you have a lot of high scores but also you know if someone cheats drastically like their score is like several orders of magnitude above the next person like yeah it's easy to see that they're a cheater don't display their score but what if someone has just cheated enough to be like in the top 10 worldwide they're not really in the top 10 but their score appears as though it is in the top 10. We could use those other parameters I talked about, such as like kills, time played, bullets shot, that kind of stuff to attempt to kind of humanly validate or even using an algorithm validate whether or not that's a possible score. But at this rate, it's kind of like speedrunning. If you want to submit your speedrun, you need video evidence and even speedruns have cheaters. And these anti-cheat measures, all they're really trying to do is just not display the score in the leaderboards. The score can still exist in the database. We can still have a record of that person and their massive cheating. But if it doesn't show up in the leaderboard, then their cheating doesn't matter. We can't really 100% stop this. So the best we can do is just try and make this as hard as possible. Because at the end of the day, the real losers are the people spending hours trying to break the game instead of being a normal person and just enjoying it. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out Hostinger while they have their Black Friday sale. Link below. And look out for our new game coming soon.